I'd be using services from Apple, Google and Samsung, and I began by testing to see if they could send an email. Apple's Siri on the iPhone was introduced in 2011, but the voice has since been tweaked to make it sound more natural when answering your questions. Please send an email to Steve. Is everything ready for next week's shoot? What's the subject of the email? Next week's shoot. OK, I updated the subject. Ready to send it. Send. OK, John, I'll send it. My Siri email popped up immediately on my laptop, and it was equally efficient when I asked for a reminder to buy some milk. Here's your reminder for today at 12 o'clock. Thank you very much. It is I who should be thanking you. Gosh, what an amazing assistant. Like Jeeves. Brilliant. <laughs> Next, I used Google Now on a Nexus 5 to carry out the same operations. Here's your email. Do you want to send it? Yes. Sending email. Another success, though Google's synthesised voice was less appealing than Siri's. Remind me to get some milk at 12.05. Get some milk, OK. It requires a bit more touch input, I think. Finally, I used Samsung's S voice to send an email and immediately hit a problem. S voice does not currently support this feature. Oh dear. But it handled my reminder as well as the other two did. Saving my task. It tells me what it's doing. That's good. OK, I saved it. So, after our first test, Siri was in the lead. Next, I went for a drive and soon received my reminder from Siri. Aha, get some milk. I decided to see if Siri could also provide me with directions. Where's my nearest supermarket? I was able to locate the closest supermarket using the built-in Apple Maps. However, Siri clearly had its own ideas about what a supermarket looks like. <laughs> well, this is very much not a supermarket. So, a fail for Siri, but would Google do any better? Ah, it's now Tesco Express. A promising start. As you might expect, Google now uses Google Maps, which has a couple of key advantages. If you want, you can use it offline, which saves data, and secondly, on our drive, it appeared to be deadly accurate. Your destination is on the left. Indeed it is. Atlas full of all the milk I could possibly consume. Samsung's S Voice also uses Google Maps, but bafflingly it seemed quite unaware of Tesco and took me much further afield. Past dozens of shops now, We're heading for the city centre. That's ridiculous. The destination is on the right. The British Heart Foundation customer collection point. I think they'll have some milk. No parking as well. To make it even worse. <laughs> oh dear. So, Google had won the milk and sat-nav test, but my final hurdle was general knowledge in the form of gadget mind. And I began my questions with Siri. Hello, what is your name? My name is Siri, but you knew that already. Ooh, thank you very much. Anyway, your first question is, how do you spell phablet? The answer is tablet. I'm afraid not. No, it's P-H-A-B-L-E-T. What's the best smartphone? The one you're holding. Debatable, but worth a point for cheek. OK. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? An Apple spokesperson declined to comment. <laughs> ah, very Apple. And for being a smart Alex, Siri scored just one. Could Google do any better? First question. How do you spell phablet? Phablet. P-H-A-B-L-E-T. Correct. What's the best smartphone? You all have to decide for yourself. Hmm, very philosophical. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? A woodchuck would chuck as much wood as a woodchuck could chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. Well, I think that answer is as sensible as the question, so I'll take that. Well done. So, Google gets full marks, but we still had one more contestant. How do you spell phablet? 
No, I was after phablet, not flabulate, which I believe means fan-shaped. What's the best smartphone? People rave about Samsung smartphones for a reason. Well, it's an answer. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? With a paper, the ability of woodchucks to chuck cellulose fibres. Concluded that a woodchuck can chuck 361.9237001 cubic centimetres of wood per day. Excellent. Very comprehensive. But even that surprisingly in-depth answer wasn't enough to change our final scoreboard. It's just 2G's Fess Voice. It's the most limited of the three to use and literally took me up a blind alley. It's 3G's for Siri. Though it's a pleasant and intuitive system, it's hopeless when you need to buy some milk. And it's 4G's for Google Now. It provided efficient reminders, the best directions and the most correct answers to my general knowledge questions.